When I was in school, soldiering was never in my mind. My father was a prisoner of war and during the Japanese occupation. My mother, brother, and my father, brother were both executed. So I was influenced by quite a number of people, including my father, who felt that I should join the army to survive better. At least you have a chance to fight for your survival. When Malaysia was formed, Indonesia objected to the inclusion of Sabah and Sarawak and declared an unofficial war of terrorism, Confrontasi. When confrontation happened, the commandant told us that you all are going to face terrorism because there will be infiltrators and you have to deal with them. I learned something about the military you mustn't give away that feeling. I'm trained to shoot to kill. And that is my profession. You kill or be killed. You must do that. Otherwise, you get killed. Because the enemy had the same order that I have. In Kota Tinggi, searching for the terrorists, my mission was advance and pursue and search and destroy. So my duty was just to pursue the enemy and they run into the ambush positions. When I discovered the eight bodies that lie in the river, I suddenly feel scared. It's quite natural. Fear is always there. The problem is how to overcome the fear one week after Singapore was forced out of Malaysia, two SIR were deployed to Sabah. When we became independent, Dr. Go Keng Sui decided that we should carry on with our obligation in Sabah. It was quite frightening when I first arrived there. I heard of the news about a Malayan regiment being massacred by the terrorists, 80% casualties. As we arrived, they welcomed us with more tambong, so we had to take covers. They didn't aim directly at us, but just at the outskirts of the defended area. When I crossed the border to find out more about their activities, they saw me, they didn't do anything, the sniper did not do anything, but on my way back, they began to shell me. And I ran all the way back. I have never run three kilometers faster than what I have done before. We were just lucky and fortunate, yeah. Colonel Go subsequently became a pioneer tank commander in Singapore's first armour tank formation. We learned that we have to have a strong armed force to defend the nation. And as a result of which, everybody must be involved. For this commitment of everybody, we got the national service system in place. What started here in 1967 was the beginning of my journey that took me to defending the beaches at Changi. And this was my contribution as part of my service during confrontation. We were briefed when we were told to deploy. Indonesian Marines are being hanged. The Indonesian Armada has come out. They're moving towards Singapore. We have to go and defend the Badok Changi area. To dig trenches, put our sandbags. We had live ammunition in our magazine. The platoon commander had binoculars. When I looked through the binoculars, I could see the Armada facing us. How do I protect myself? How do I survive? That's a warship there. We are just soldiers. We are frightened. Fear will always be there. 
my men were afraid. So I had to show them that I wasn't as afraid as them. What would have happened if they had landed? Would we have survived? And where would we be today? We have to be able to have everything so that we can fight something like that. We are very small, but deterrence is the key. The defense of Singapore is still the primary thing. So no matter what happens, you cannot let this guard down. On August the 9th, 2015, pioneers Colonel Go and Lieutenant Colonel Singh proudly took part in Singapore's 50th celebration parade, passing the baton of our defense onto the next generation of the SAF.